Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured. But the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. One particularly interesting, and I, I think for a lot of first-time readers, confusing distinction that Aristotle will make in Categories Chapter 6, where he's discussing quantity, is that between what we translate as primary and secondary senses of, of this category of quantity. <clears throat> How is it that things are of a certain amount or measure out to, to a certain uh, number or however we want to put it. So Aristotle is going to, at this point, say something that we have to sort of, you know, look back and then, and then bring the, these ideas in in order to make sense of. He says, the things we have mentioned alone, only those things, can be called in the strictest or primary sense, the kurios in Greek, sense quantities. So what has he mentioned? Well, he's discussed number and speech, which are discrete quantity, according to him. Remember, speech means the length of syllables. And then we have you know, these geometric concepts like line, plane, solid, or, or body, soma. Those are continuous quantity. And then we have time and space, which he also treats as continuous quantity, although with a few qualifications here and there in, in terms of time. So those are quantity in the primary sense of, of the term that he means. When we think about it, we might say speech maybe doesn't actually fit in there when we look at the, the secondary. So he goes on and he says, other things that are so called, that are called quantities, are called in a secondary sense. And, and quantity, you know, think of anything that we can ascribe a number to, that we can answer the question, how much, or how big, or <clears throat> how many, or how long, right? And he says, anything else that's being ascribed quantity would fit into, fit into this, this other group of the kata sum bebekos. And we can translate that as secondary, or we can translate that as derivative. Um, strictly speaking, what we're talking about there is what is accidental. Something is essentially quantity. Something else happens to be called quantity. Remember, categories are ways of predicating something of something else. So we call something a quantity, but it's not really itself a quantity. It's a quantity, as he's going to say, because of something else. And I think that looking at the two examples that he provides might be quite helpful. Um, so let's, let's take a look at those. He says a white object is often called large. Okay, so, or, or a book. Take this, for example half of it's white, you know, uh, well, maybe more than half if we unfold it, uh, green as well. So a green and white object is called of a certain size. We call this, for example, a pocketbook because you could, you could put it in your pocket. Um, and, and if we say something like that, I think that's a useful way of talking about it because notice that when you call something pocketbook sized, you're saying that it fits into something else. It's, it's in relation to something else that it has the quantity being pocket sized. Um, you know, in this case, maybe these books, I don't know, are six inches by four inches by an inch and a half thick. I'm just guessing here, right? It has a certain space. And so um, in this case, an object is in relation to space. But it's the space that really is, according to Aristotle, 
the quantity in the primary sense. How much space does this thing take up? How much does it cover? So he has, in this case, um, the surface that this white object, think about like maybe a tarp that we put on the ground. The surface is, that it covers is large, right? If we, if we ask, well, um, how big, how large is that white thing? You mention the surface that it covers. So in this case, you know, it's not super big, but just imagine we put this thing down. How much space is covered? Well, you know, not, not quite a square foot, right? Because this is four inches, that's six inches, 24 square inches, you know, we can go on and on and on, right? And, you know, we can imagine something bigger. How much, how much space is my, my shirt covering? Less than my tie, right? My tie is an object. My shirt is an object. This book is an object. My, my body itself is an object that is occupying a certain amount of space, but you could put something else in its place. For instance, you could make a mold of me like they do in those, those museums and make some sort of, you know, Dr. Sadler effigy. And if it was, you know, pretty close to me, you would occupy more or less the same amount of space. So with objects, we're generally not quantifying them per se. We're quantifying something else the amount of space that is being taken up. And, and you might think of that in terms of these geometric, uh, you know, uh, notions like plane, right? Or you might think of it in terms of, of spatiality itself. Um, what about things that exist in time? Here's where we might actually want to rethink speech a little bit, although Aristotle doesn't at this point. He uses the example of an action, right? A praxis. He also uses another example closely related to that, which is of a process of change, a kinesis. And he says, um, uh, here we go. Uh, an action or process is called long since the time that it occupies is long. So it's dependent on something other than itself, on time. So if we go on and we look at what he says about this, he says, somebody asks you, how long was that action? What, what number would you assign to that action? Well, you're assigning something, whether in seconds or years or minutes or whatever measure that you want, moons, right? Whatever it is that you're using as a point of comparison, whatever time terms, those are time. And the action exists in a certain amount of time. This is why, you know, when it comes down to it, we might want to assimilate speech. We might want to put speech over here on this side and say that speech actually exists in relation to time. Long and short, you know, might be a certain amount of time and half that amount of time. If we're talking about, you know, the long and short syllables that are used in, in Greek words. Put that aside for the moment. Let's, let's see what else Aristotle's saying here. It says, the name quantity cannot be given to such things as of their own right. It doesn't mean that we can't say that they are quantities or that they have a certain number, but it means that they don't have that in and of themselves. They are not primary. It's just accidental that they, they so happen to be that way. And this requires a little transformation in how we typically think of these things. We, we often think of an action as of a certain length in time, right? But it's really the time that we're referring to. We think of objects as being of a certain magnitude when really it's the amount of space that they're occupying that, that matters. He goes on and he says, the things then referred to alone in themselves can, can be strictly called quantities, these things, right? Um, other things thus designated only lay claim to that name, if at all, in a secondary sense, in a derivative fashion, and not from their intrinsic nature. So again, just to reinforce and to bring this to a close, it's not to say that things over here don't have quantity at all. It's just not as essential to what they are as it is to things over here, which, which are quantities or are 
ways for quantity to be, you might say, uh, or what it is that quantity can be quantity of. Now, you notice there's one that doesn't get talked about at all here, and that's number, except insofar as we're relating it to time or to space. 